It's a Dota Weekly Show. Yay! Hey guys, you're watching the Dota Weekly Show, your source of news, mechanics, and whatever that interests me. I'm Luminous, your host for the show, and let's get right into the news. This week, pretty big news as well. Last time we talked about how MYM is disbanding, but this time they are coming back with the roster that's quite shocking, quite shocking. Formerly known as Scythe SG, now MYM, Meet Your Makers, now is carrying the players of Hi Hi, Tofu, Ice Ice Ice, Roy, XY, Yamate. Can't forget Yamate because he will be in the roster as well. So the new MYM actually looks extremely stacked. Some of the best players in the uh, Singapore slash Malaysian area. I'm really looking forward to this team playing. I haven't seen actually seen any replays of them on Ghost of Gamer just yet. So I'm pretty sure they're training really hard right now. Being sponsored by MYM, such a prestige, such an honor. There's a there's such a long history of this team. So I'm looking forward to seeing MYM play and let's see how how well they'll do in the future. Second piece of news is that M5 is disqualified from the HFGL tournament. And uh, M5 originally was replacing MYM since MYM disbanded. But after the game against Tyloo, some of the M5 player uh, released a replay. Um, and the replays were not supposed to be released. And apparently the M5 players knew about it and they released it anyways. Whereas M5 said that we didn't know about it. Uh, you know, the HFGL admins just dis disqualified us. So... We, we have half the opinion saying that, hey, they are just afraid of Vigos, so let's just DQ them. Versus the other half of the players saying that, hey, the rules are there, M5 should have known. Um, so I don't know which which side you guys stand, but it's, it's you know, it's kind of a he says, she said kind of thing. So it's kind of messy. But at the end of the day, M5 is disqualified, so they're no longer in the HFGL tournament. I'll keep you guys posted on how the HFGL tournament is going. As you guys know, I am casting it. So uh, you guys will definitely hear more information about that from me. So that's pretty much it for the big news of this week. There's a couple of interviews, uh, one about Dendi. Um, there's a definitely a very interesting article about M5 and Navi joining together, or the organization of them is joining together. And I definitely urge you to check those out on ghostofgamer.net or on sggamer.dota. So definitely very interesting articles that you might want to read. And with that, let's go into mechanics. For this week's mechanic, I want to look at the item armlet. As you know, the armlet has a very nice buildup. Most of the parts are really, really cheap. The total cost of the armlet is fairly cheap, and the stats it gives, especially to strength hero, is absolutely crazy. When I'm thinking about the armlet, there's two questions I want to answer. One, is the armlet good enough where I could actually buy it on intelligence heroes or agility heroes? Even when you activate armlet on a non-strength hero, you still get plus 40 damage, some decent attack speed. 25 strength won't give you the damage, but it's some really decent HP. So I want to know whether I would actually get it on an intelligence hero or agility hero. The second thing that I'm interested in is that yes, we know that armlet is very strong on strength hero, but exactly how strong it is it? Um, is it a de facto item we get every time we play a strength hero, or do we consider some other items out there? Um, so I think the easiest way to answer both questions is to do a simple item comparison between the non-strength armlet, the strength armlet, and Maelstrom. The reason I picked Maelstrom is because last week we did Monir, and Monir turned out to be a surprisingly strong DPS item. Maelstrom kind of going down the same alley, uh, doing the DPS through the magical side, so I think it would be a good item comparison. Now the math and the uh, graphs will be attached in the description box, so you could check it out there if you want to do so. Now going back to question number one, uh, it seems like that there's just better items out there to get, especially if you're intelligence or agility. Yes, the plus 25 strength is really, really good. Um, but the, the plus 40 damage is okay, you can't really upgrade it anymore uh, for you know plus 46 damage you could look to a demon edge which costs about the same thing yes again you don't again you don't get the strength but it's an item that you could upgrade into something else so personally I think if I'm going into intelligence slash agility hero I would I would not consider armlet as a choice it, it's a really nice build up it gives you some really nice stats even on non strength heroes but I think for that amount of price you could get something else that either builds into a stronger late game item or helps you better in a different situation. Maelstrom and Armlet pretty much comes down to toe to toe. It comes down to things like magic resistance um, and an armor of course. The two items actually equal out when the enemy has 12 to 15 armors. At any point of higher armor the Maelstrom will be better. 
any points of lower armor, uh, the armlet will be better. So this suggests that even on strength heroes, even on strength heroes, um, the armlet actually might not be the best item to get. A Maelstrom in this case does more DPS. Of course, DPS is not the only thing we care about. It gives 25 strength. That's a lot of HP to go through. Uh, so that's something that we have to consider as well. So in summary, to answer those uh, two questions very briefly is I won't be getting armlet on non-strength heroes. And even for strength heroes, there are moments and times where Maelstrom or another DPS item might be more suited to what you're trying to do. Again, the, the magic number is that if your enemy is carrying around 15, 12 armors, uh, that's when Maelstrom starts to do a little bit more DPS. Around this entire discussion, you guys have not heard me talk about the other side of the active the armlet, which, you know, the, the degen, the, 30, uh, the minus 37 HP degen, the fact that you gain an entire extra bonus chunk of HP when you pop it on and pop it off. That's that's just case dependent. That's hero dependent. It depends whether on you're getting lifesteal. If you're not getting lifesteal, armlet suddenly becomes a really really bad item. If you don't have insane amount of regen, the armlet really becomes a bad item. That's something to be considered as well. And that's the reason why we don't see armlet so much. Even though it gives so good stats, the minus 37 HP re uh, degen is just too much to go counter. Um, you really need some strong lifesteal, such as fees from Nyx to really go through it. Uh, and even so, even so, there are other stronger item choice that you might want to consider even when you play Nyx. With that, that's pretty much it as an item discussion of Armlet. It's definitely not really conclusive, but I think it allows us to, you know, at least think about the item a little bit more. Who knows, uh, you know, maybe I missed a hero that maybe was agility and maybe uh, would benefit from armlet quite a bit. I actually look forward to what you guys will put in the comment section below. Let's see if you guys, you know, answer my two questions a little bit differently and uh, kind of get a little bit of a different result. And that concludes today's mechanic discussion. For this week's interesting things happening, I just want to let you guys know that I am going to be releasing a frequently asked question video because I see some of the questions keep ask, keep being asked over and over again. I already have a pretty good list of questions drafted up, and it's things like, how come you don't use your intro anymore? You know, where's Sienna? Where's Jack? Why don't you commentate with them anymore? Uh, questions like those. So I already have a pretty good list drafted up, like I said, but but um, I don't know if I'm missing anything. So if you think you have a couple of good questions that you want me to answer on my FAQ video, uh, do post them on the comment section below. I think I'm going to be doing it soon next week. And as you guys know as well, I am doing that marathon casting series. Every day there will be a video uploaded on my YouTube channel. Obviously today is still the weekly show, so no commentary, but... I will be uploading commentaries all the way up to my 200th commentary. So do stay tuned and check out my YouTube channel every day because there's going to be new content on it. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's Dota Weekly Show. And until next time, as always, this is Lumis signing off. See you guys.